Sorry, guys, I'm here. I think I'm live. Good morning. I'm just putting my little heater on here because it's cold. It's not that cold, actually, but let me just pop this on. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. How is everybody? Uh, I had a little bit of problem logging on this morning. Um, my Wi Fi is. I think it goes, um, it reckons Sunday's uh, <laughs> it's day off. I have a little, I live out rural, so I have a little modem and uh, sometimes the service, and it's a really good modem, but sometimes the service is really good and then, and then it'll just sort of, I've got it just next to me here, it sort of drops out a bit, so hopefully it'll be okay. So here we are for a, our, my, our, our Sunday weekly live. And I actually haven't planned a topic. <laughs> I sort of have, but um, it's been one of those weeks uh, and I've been just a little bit all over the place as I think a lot of us are at the moment. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd just pop on and see if anyone pops on and has a question. Otherwise, I will pluck something out of my head because there's always something to talk about with off-the-track thoroughbreds. And yeah, so I'll just have a sip of my coffee and wait and see if anybody pops on. I hope everybody is doing okay in these um, trying times of the world. Uh, just myself, I've just been a little bit preoccupied with it the last week. Um, I have to stop because like everybody else, um, you get a little bit worried, uh, a little bit down and um, yeah, it's... Um, it's uh, it's something that uh, we've never experienced before, is it? So, uh, yeah, just a little bit um, get, gets into your head and I've sort of let it get into my head the last week and the, you know, COVID-19 and I'm just feeling really sorry here in Australia, if you're not in Australia, there's, and I'm sure it's happening everywhere in the world, I know what's happening, but there's some severe restrictions down in Sydney and I'm just really feeling feeling for the people down that way um, if we have any members here that are down that way I yeah I really am feeling for you um, I can imagine you know I, I, it would just be so hard um, not only financially and but but mentally so much stress people are going through at the moment so yeah I'm just feeling um, really sad for a lot of people but anyway let's not go there because I get a little bit I just yeah um, a little bit concerned for people's well-being. But anyway, um, we are where we are and hopefully everyone is really well and um, your ponies are really well. Um, I know we've got a few members uh, that have uh, started the Off The Track um, Thoroughbred Success, the Kickstart program. Uh, so yeah, loving to hear, like I'm loving the feedback that I'm getting from that and um, if you think that any, uh, you know, any recommendations or I could make it better anyway, anyway, um, I'm very open to feedback. And if you haven't um, joined the Off The Track Thoroughbred Success Program, let me know and I will, it, it, I did, um, it is discounted down now to $47 US if you haven't joined already. Um, and it, I'm actually going to be changing the structure of of everything so and uh, turning it into a um I'm, I'm looking at creating a monthly membership um with the course which is going to be so full of so much wonderful content and anyone who has purchased the course before i do that um gets the membership for free for life so yeah really um i want to <clears throat> let everybody know um, if they haven't, uh, if they're not already a, um, you know, purchased or have joined the Off The Track Thoroughbred Success Pro Kickstart Roadmap, um, it's really good value uh, for the price that I've got it down to. And I would love to have you um, in, the, in the course and then you automatically go into the monthly membership, uh, which I'm creating at the moment. And yeah, you don't, you, you just get, um, lifetime access so no reoccurring fee or anything like that so there's going to be some wonderful perks for you I'll put a post up for that uh, about that um, sometime today in the meantime uh, let's think uh, well I've got a topic I want to talk about the only thing is um, it's this uh, there's uh, some pages and, and 
documents that I wanted to sort of show and I don't think I can show it. Um, I, normally I can screen share with uh, Zoom and I think what I might do, and this is going to be in the monthly membership, we're going to be doing um, regular Zoom training sessions. So, but I can't do it on Facebook Live, so I can't share my screen, so I can't show you um, what I'm really, uh, really passionate about at the moment and want to share um, some really good information. So what I, what I did uh, last week, I bought a wonderful course. Um, I've been looking a lot, uh, reading a lot about it. Um, and if I can find the, I'm just going to move us over. So hopefully I don't go off the screen here. <laughs> Where is my, uh, it is, now it's the pain ethogram. Now what this is talking about, oh, I hope I don't lose this. I'm moving, moving you across the screen, guys. Okay, I've got this one. If I open this up, I hope it doesn't cover. Oh, okay, so you might only see half my face there. Oh no, you probably can see everything because um, it's only me. Um, so horses talk to us all the time. They're always talking to us. Now they talk to us in body language. They talk to us in their facial expressions. They talk to us in the way they move. And if we don't understand what these signs mean, we're not picking up on what they're trying to say to us. We're not picking up on their communication. So it's really, really important to learn, one, how horses communicate, basically, their natural way of communicating, which is predominantly body language, okay? They, they don't, they're not very vocal animals. Um, well, very, rarely vocal. You, will, you just know in paddocks, you will hardly ever hear them. You know, they're not constantly whinnying out to each other unless they're really stressed or anxious. They've lost, you know, their mate's been taken out or something like that. But they're very, very, um, they communicate in a very tactile way through body language. And they're very, very fine-tuned to pick up subtle expressions in your posture, in your, the way your mood, um, whether you, um, your mood's going to change your posture, even if you're not aware of it, um, that's going to tense your muscles. So they pick up in everything. Um, they'll pick up if you're a little bit frustrated, they'll pick up, um, they really, they will work so well around someone, you know, compared, um, who is calm and very slow and, um, not going to say slow, but very rhythmical and calm in their movements more than someone that's rushy and aggressive and, and frustrated. So I think I've talked about that before. Uh, now we need to learn to read the horse's body language. We need to learn what they're trying to tell us. And, and part of this is learning to know when they're in pain. This is a big thing with off the track thoroughbreds. This is a big thing with all horses, particularly thoroughbred race horses and particularly uh, You'll see it a lot in elite, um, you know, the elite eventing and dressage and that. Now, I've got a picture here uh, that is showing three horses expressing facial expressions and they're expressing pain. Now, a course that I bought, now if I can, um, I should have been a little bit more organised this morning. I'm going to move myself over here. I think, tell me if you lose me. <laughs> here we go. I've got it. Uh, I'm moving down here and over here. It's called, let me have a look here. Okay. Recog recognition of equine poor performance and the ridden horse pain ethogram. So, if you haven't heard of a vet, she's actually been, there's been a little bit of controversy around uh, her, but Dr. Sue Dyson. So she's an incredible vet that has put a lot of work into um, equine lameness and studies. And uh, she created what they call, she's a very world, worldwide, like worldwide known, um, recognized. And she has a wonderful course called um, the 24, um, responses of oh, I'm I can't remember what it's called I bought it last week but it is uh, the ridden horse pain ethogram so it is an ethogram of I think she has uh, 24 facial responses that a horse will show you and 
Uh, I think there's 24 um, body, like all over responses of how a horse moves and everything. Now, if horses have these signs, one, to, I think, and also two, if, if they combine a certain amount of these signs, well, then you definitely know they're in pain. But they're expressing themselves in a way that ha after she, so a study was done where they put 400 horses, they researched 400 horses and watched the expressions, their facial expressions of horses uh, in pain um, and then when they were given nerve blocks or and 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 also sound horses and unsound horses and what they came up with what Sue Dyson came up with Dr. Sue Dyson is an ethogram of body and facial expressions of horses that were in pain and it was consistent through every single horse so these signs are what horses will show if they are in pain and it is fantastic. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about that today. Um, and it's really relevant at the moment with a horse that I'm riding track work. Uh, I was thinking about it and he's progressively got worse. He's had the chiropractor and everything actually, but he's progressively got worse and he is showing all these signs. He's actually in pain. Um, and he's been showing um, these a few of these signs of um, what Sue Dyson talks about. Now, one of them, now I, I haven't actually, I've got the ethogram here, but I can't find it. So I will share it in the group, but I have something else. Let me if I'll scroll up. Okay, so I'll just talk a little bit about some of the signs um, that you will see in the ridden horse that uh, are signs that the horse can be in pain. I mean, some of these signs can be, um, training issues but I always say you've got to rule out pain first so the first one here is um, repeated changes of head position up and down so the head is going up and down and not in rhythm with the trot now that's a sign of pain okay so <clears throat> sometimes a horse can carry a high head carriage um, and it's um you know that can be a training issue uh, especially with off the track thoroughbreds because they don't go round with you know with the, the frame and the rounded back that we want to teach them for the equestrian disciplines but it, you can it is sort of you can sort of actually um, pick the difference between just a naturally high head carriage and a horse that's in pain but even if your horse has a consistent high head carriage um, I would make sure that you need to rule out pain first. Now I'll share these in the group and I'll share them on my page. I just wanna put a little article together. So if your horse is going around with a, a high head carriage repeatedly and it's and on top of that, it's inconsistent, inconsistent and not in rhythm with the trot, that's a sign of pain. Um, and what Sue Dyson said here, so I'll move myself over and hope that um, you can see me. An ethogram is simply a catalogue of different kinds of behaviours observed in an animal, each with strict definitions. Um, the majority of the following, so there's 24 behaviours, and these behaviours are 10 times more likely to be, seen, to be seen in a horse that may be experiencing discomfort or pain compared to a pain-free horse. So we'll just go through this in our live today. I won't go into detail uh, because there's a lot of information here, but uh, yeah, I'll just give you a um, go through these um, these behaviours quickly and then we can talk about it more in the group and uh, if anyone has any questions. So it also says here if a ridden horse displays eight or more of these behaviours it is likely to be lame or have another source of musculoskeletal pain. Many lamenesses are only observed when the horse is ridden and may only be apparent as gait abnormalities or difficulty in performing certain movements. So these horses may not be showing a particular lameness but just an uneven gait abnormality um, which is like this, this little horse that I'm riding track work. Uh, persistent high head carriage, um, just feels um, he's, he's knocking himself behind. So that's another sign. Is, is your horse brushing? Um, are they overreaching? Um, with race horses, they can often come down on the bumpers, which is the back of their fetlock. Uh, so it's really important not to ignore these signs and to think, oh, you know, I want to keep an eye on this. So let's go through the 24 quickly. <laughs> So I don't have this too long, this live. Um, the first one is, once I mentioned, repeated changes of head position up and down. So not in rhythm with the trot. So if your horse is 
um, going around with their head really high and um, not wanting to relax their back, that is, um, it can be a sign of discomfort and pain. The second one is um, head tilting. So if you're riding your horse, um, and uh, I can't, I, I will do Zoom sessions. It's gonna be so wonderful to do Zoom sessions because I can share my screen and show you all this. But um, in the meantime, I've got them in front of me. Um, head tilting. So you're riding your horse and normally your horse's nose needs to be vertical or should be vertical um, with, um, with their sternum and following your, you know, you, the track that you're riding on if you're doing a 20 meter circle. Your horse's head should be sort of um, symmetrical with the way their body's going. So if your horse, and the way to tell this is look at their ears. So when you're riding, oh, the ho is the horse's head, so their ears are, you know, they should be, oh, I'm backwards in here, um, sticking up, well, <laughs> the screen does opposite, like that, is your horse like this, going around, okay, so one ear is higher than the other, okay, so that is a sign, um, they're not straight, okay, their head position is not in rhythm with the trot either, and um, you'll notice too that they'll tend to sort of change their head position a little bit, um, that is a, so these are the signs um, the, of discomfort and pain. There's something could be going wrong. The next one is number three, head in front of the vertical. Well, um, so head in front of the vertical, this is a little bit the same as the head, you know, head up in the air. The head in front of the vertical, but by, by more than 30 degrees or for 10 seconds or longer. So this really extreme head up in the air, um, you'll see it, it's sort of like that very high head carriage uh, which we talked about in um, number one, repeated changes in head position. So they may be down here and then they're putting it really high. Or like number three, they may be carrying their head really high uh, consistently, you know, which one is a very unhealthy posture for the horse to go around in because it they, they're not using their back properly and it's just going to cause more problems um, throughout their body if it is not um, the symptom you know, often it's probably a symptom of something already going on um, somewhere else in the body anyway. But um, it's a very unhealthy posture for a horse to go around. And if they're doing it, um, you know, if, if they're not, if they're doing it for longer than uh, 10 seconds and it's consistently held up, then it's probably a sign um, that they're a little bit uncomfortable um, and even in pain. Um, this is where you want to, when you're retraining your off the track thoroughbred, you want to, and I've, I speak about this in the course, you want to go through and delete any um, issues behavior wise, um, you know, or the way that they move in that, delete and, you know, make sure that there's nothing pain related first before you start going and then, um, you know, retraining them and teaching them to move in, in a more healthy posture that is suitable for, you know, the disciplines we want to do in equestrian. Okay, so number four is head behind the vertical by more than 10 degrees or for 10 seconds or longer. So there's an issue here with um, uh, horses being ridden like this all the time, in, in, particularly in dressage. And you see it a lot in racing as well, um, you know, in track work. They're, they're ridden behind the vertical. Um, and if this is not a sign of pain, it's going to be a sign of pain because it is compressing the uh, vertebrae up around their pole and their cervical, the, you know, the, the neck. Um, so it's compressing all those, um, all the, the spine basically. Um, and it is, it's once again an unhealthy posture and it's going to cause um, problems. If the horse can't move properly throughout their body, they can't use their hind end properly and then it's just going to create um, wear and tear on these parts of the body and, and pain. Um, it's been very well documented that horses ridden in that roll car over that, you know, that very over the bent um, round round frame is, it causes a lot of problems with soundness and also causes um, distress in the horse, mental distress. They're in pain, um, they, can't, um, they can't use their jaw properly, they can't, it, it's, yeah. It's um, very uncomfortable for horses. Uh, it's like us being forced into a very tight frame and having to walk around like that. You know, imagine us having our head sort of, you know, our neck and our head over bent like this. You would start to feel very, very sore and we're not even on four legs, you know. So yeah, you can imagine it would be very, very painful. Um, so that's number four. 
Okay, once again, this is another head position and we talked about this. So number five is head position. So changes regularly, tossed or twisted from side to side um, and you're having to correct your horse's head all the time. So they might be <clears throat> tilting to the side and then they go up and down or they're tilting to the other side or um, they may be coming up, you know, um, behind the bit and uh, you might see they're very, you know, they're not wanting to reach into the bit, into the contact. Um, this also can be a problem with the rider. If the rider um, is quite hard on their hands or they're not steady with their hands. So there's so many aspects to look at when it comes to these behaviors. Um, we definitely have to make sure it's not pain related though. This is number six. So ears rotated back. So this is looking at your horse's ears. I'm just gonna have a sip of my coffee here. Now these signs are particularly important with your off the track thoroughbreds because they've come from such a highly demanding um, environment and career. Uh, they have had a lot of pressure put in their bodies. Uh, the, it's really important to see if your off the track thoroughbred is displaying any of these because you know, off the track thoroughbreds do need rehabilitation um, unless they've, you know, if they've had a very, very, if they've had an easy prayer for, I mean, you may be, lucky with some off the track thoroughbreds have come out of racing with no issues but generally because they start so young um, and it's such a, a highly demanding where their body is put under maximum pressure there's often um, there's often often some issues going on so really important to look for these signs in your off the track thoroughbred so number six is ears rotated back um, so you want to look at the ears, are they behind the vertical or flat all the time? Or are both ears back and, um, or is one ear back and the other one's not for five seconds or more? So you want to see if their ears are staying back for a, an extended period uh, um, or they're repeatedly sort of flat back. Okay, so yeah, so you want to look at the ears being behind the vertical or flat, either both ears or one ear for five seconds or more, or they're repeatedly back. I love this ethergram, it's amazing. I can't wait to do some more um, content for you guys about uh, on this because it's uh, it's so valuable. Um, number seven is eyes eyelids closed. So there's some great photos here and I wish I could share them with you, but um, we'll do Zoom. I'll do a Zoom session and um, I can share my screen. So eyelids closed, so they're half closed for two to five seconds or frequent blinking. So you look at the horse's eye and you will see this in a lot of um, elite, well, I'm not gonna say a lot, but you will see this in some elite um, performance horses, show jumpers, eventers, they have that very, um, that stressed eye. Um, so this particular number says seven is looking at their actual eyelids, are they closed or half closed, or there's frequent blinking. I know also they can have this, um, this so number eight is talking about them showing their white of a, the white of the eye. Uh, it's called the scler sclera, sclera? Uh, someone might know it, S-C-L-E-R-A, um, -E which is the white of their eye. Um, and I wanna have a look and notice if this white of the horse's eye is exposed repeatedly. So this is another sign that the horse could be in discomfort and or pain. Now this is what we do see in a lot of the elite eventers, um, dressage, um, performance horses, uh, you know, and it's actually been, um, there's someone put an article on it recently um, about the Olympics, but they, horse number nine is an intense stare. So a bit of a glazed expression, or they look a little bit zoned out. Um, and this stare remains for five seconds or more. So you, you will see it, and I've got some really good photos here where they're just sort of like zoned out and you, you just look at their eye and you can see that they're, they're in discomfort, they're in pain somewhere. Um, so that's number nine of the pain ethogram. So once again, if you've just popped into the live, I'm going through 24 signs that your horse, um, the horse, horses show that they're in discomfort or pain. Number 10, mouth opening and or shutting repeatedly. So with separation of the teeth, so for 10 seconds or more. So you'll see the horse open its mouth and their teeth are separated. So yeah, they don't look comfortable. And it's very obvious that they're not comfortable um, when they're going around with their mouth open. Number 11, 
tongue exposed. So you will see horses with their tongue protruding um, or hanging out and or moving in and out repeatedly. So their tongue hanging out, um, and this is ridden, this is in the ridden horse, um, is a sign of discomfort and pain. Number 12, the bit pulling through their mouth. So uh, this one, uh, well, this is, uh, I suppose this can be rider and uh, horse, a sign of the horse. So the reason the bit is pulling through the mouth is because the horse is not responding to the aids. Either they have not been um, retrained properly, so they're not responding to the light pressure of turning left or right. So it's really important to teach your horse to flex, to flex left or right um, and bend left or right on light pressure with the bit. Um, so if the bit is going through the mouth, the reason for that is they're not responding. Okay, they're not responding to the aid. Now they're not responding, um, either they haven't been trained properly, you know, haven't been trained to respond to the light um, bit pressure, or they're not responding because they're, they're in pain. Okay, they're locked somewhere and they can't turn. So if you see, if your horse, you, the bit's pulling through their mouth, um, and this is something that you do see um, in, in race horses um, because of the type of work that we do and track work and it's just so highly demanding and um, focus on, um, you know, suppleness and, and responding to light aids is, is not a priority. Um, so that is number 12, the bit pulling through the horse's mouth. Okay, this is, this is uh, an interesting one and one so you see a lot. Number 13, the tail clamp. So you look at your horse's tail, either is the tail clamp down or when your horse goes around, is it um, held tightly in the middle so it's not flowing and relaxed or held to one side? So when your horse is going around, um, is your horse holding their tail to one side? Now, one way to do this, if you haven't got someone that's um, watching your horse or it's not in a vet um, examination or anything, video yourself while you're riding. Um, and then you can look back and look at how your horse is traveling. Um, just put your iPhone up um, or a camera and um, just get some, yeah, just get a bit of footage of you riding around and then you can go back and analyze it. So is, is the tail clamp down? Is it held tightly in the midi middle and it's not um, relaxed and flowing? Or is it held to one side, either left or right? Tail swishing, this is number 14. Um, is the tail swishing up and down? And you'll see this if you go and watch some of the Olympics. I haven't actually watched the Olympics because I've been so busy with um, other things, with the equestrian events. But I have no doubt you'll be seeing in the dressage tail swishing in some of these horses. Is the tail swishing quite aggressively in large movements, um, repeatedly up and down or side to side or in circular motions? Um, yeah, and this is repeated. So you'll see, just say through the dressage test, you'll see this tail just continually swishing up and down um, or side to side. You, the tail should be relaxed and sort of uh, flowing um, out the back. Now you will see in a video I put of Dragon, um, I, one of my off the track thoroughbreds, you will notice generally his tail is, it's not swishing, it's generally nice and relaxed and flying out the back. Now there is in that video, video you will see, and I'm very observant with this, um, in his canter, a little swish. Now this, so Dragon was a big learning curve for me because he had a lot of body issues. He was not an easy horse to retrain. In fact, he, he really, um, I had to put him out for six months um, and bring him back because I just could not get him to soften. He, his confirmation is, um, you know, you can get uh, typical for some of off the track thoroughbreds, a lot of off the track thoroughbreds there on the forehand. So they've got a big shoulder um, and um, you'll see more sort of more mass and their weight looks more on the front and then the back. So they're not sort of upright and, and they, so they're, they, they, they're not upright. They look a little bit more downhill um, in their conformation. And that is part of the thoroughbred breed because that's what makes them really good for racing. Um, but when it comes to retraining and your dressage and all of that, it takes more work to teach them to be in self-carriage and up and carrying themselves. So it does take a lot more work, um, but I find it so rewarding and I just love the thoroughbred race for so much. I get goosebumps saying that. I just love them. I love them. They're amazing animals and they teach you everything. So Dragon was a big learning curve for me and um, this was, I've had him for quite a while, Dragon. Um, he was up for sale, but um, he'll never be sold. He's, he's, and I used to teach beginners on him. Um, he's amazing, I've done cross country and he's such an awesome horse. 
but um, I was getting frustrated. Um, this was years ago, so it's a big. This all this process has been a big learning curve for me. So I know the frustration because I have been there, and I'm like, oh my god, why don't you just soften? I used to ride Dragon Track Work, and he used to hang really badly. Um, and he did he did two tendons so he came back and the reason he hung was because he'd already done one tendon so usually they will um, when they come back into racing after doing a tendon they very rarely will um, you know go through to a, a successful racing career without doing the other tendon or breaking down because there's compensation but he would he would hang um, in racing so he had issues and then when I got him out of racing he had his he had to spell um, recovering from a tendon injury and he was, he had, um, I had uh, the chiropractor, a really good osteopath look over him and he had muscle tears, so from racing industry, some old muscle tears and scar tissue there. But he was really, really t challenging and I would find myself getting frustrated, which is an emotion and which is not healthy, not good to be frustrated when you're riding. Um, and I just, I just took a step back and as I do because there's no use being frustrated. And this was years ago. Um, and I came back um, with a completely different mindset and some t completely different tools. And once again, I'm always learning and researching. And um, and approached him in a different way, uh, working in, doing a lot more in-hand work, doing a lot more um, the classical dressage training of, of teaching them to work in a healthy posture. And it, it's worked amazing with Dragon. Um, and yeah, so, um, you will see in the video, um, and he did have some sacred iliac issues, so I'm always aware of, he's going lovely and beautiful straight in that video, as you will notice. It is a little bit hard for him, but I would, you know, I kept an eye on, um, you know, if he got worse in that tail swishing, you know, um, he may have just been finding, um, you know, it, it's, he was working hard in that video um, to, and I was um, working hard, you know, keeping very focused on keeping him in a healthy posture and only doing it for a short um, frame, you know, short time frame, his, his training sessions to build up so he gets stronger, um, which is like any training, you know, fitness or anything. You progressively just build the muscles to, um, to get stronger and fitter to work in a more healthy frame. So that, yeah, so that's tail swishing. <laughs> so if you go back and watch my video with Dragon, you'll see predominantly, except for uh, a little, one little um, tail movement, his tail is steady and nice and flowing, and that's what you want. Okay, number 15, a rushed gait. Okay, is your horse rushing? Okay, so um, their, their, their trot steps are more than 40 steps in 15 seconds so you'd have to count this count this so this is an issue i have with one of my horses that i'm riding track work he's very rushy and he has a very high head courage um and he is in pain um it's been uh, you know he was so he the chiropractor and the vets come out and everything so we have um diagnosed that there's something going on there so really fast trotting steps okay um irregular rhythm in the trot and canter they're changing so repeated changes of speed in your trot and canter they're not wanting to maintain a rhythm but they're wanting to rush okay so if they're wanting to rush in their trot and canter um that can be a sign of discomfort and pain and they won't come back so this rushing is going on so you if you could count every 15 seconds their trot steps are more than 40 in 15 seconds the gait too slow, so the trot steps are really, really slow and they're not wanting to go forward. So this is a little bit different from a little bit dull to the aids and lazy, but this is real resistant where they're just not wanting to go forward and you feel like they're stuck. Um, really a passage-like trot. So just this really slow, not wanting to be active in their body and over the back type of trot. So that's number 16 in the pain ethogram. Okay, so the hind limbs not following track of the forelimbs. Okay, so if you, and once again, you can pick this up in a video or someone watching you. So if you're on your track um, and you're circling, you're going straight or you're circling around to the left or the right in the arena, the, um, you, the hind limbs are deviating left or right. And so they're on three tracks. So the, your, the, hind, the, the hind limbs aren't following the steps of the four limbs. Now this can be a training issue as well. They've just, um, and, and often off, off the track thoroughbreds aren't gonna be straight. In their hind limbs because we have discussed this before that they work completely different in racing than they do in dressage but if this is um, persistent and you feel like you just can't with with your retraining straighten your horse 
um, behind um, and get them to track up underneath, then I would be looking at um, making that you're know, going in and seeing if it's pain related. So you will know that the horse, if they're if they're drifting with their hind legs left to right and they are not easily straightening up once you train them to light responses with your leg aids. Um, it can be a sign of discomfort and pain. Canter, repeatedly changing legs. This is, this is something that you see quite often. So becoming disunited in the canter, um, re repeatedly striking off on the wrong leg. Um, yeah, so being disunited in the canter, um, uh, you know, repeatedly is, is one of the signs of discomfort and pain. 19, spontaneous changes of gait. So you're in trot, um, you're in canter and they're wanting to break to um, trot all the time or trot to canter. So you're wanting your horse to be in a nice rhythmical trot and they're breaking into canter all the time. They're not wanting to relax into a nice rhythmical trot. Um, so this is definitely a sign of discomfort and pain. And once again, you're cantering and you, you feel like it's stuck and they're just wanting to come back to trot all the time. So this is that's an important one and seen quite often. Number 20, stumbles. Okay, they're stumbling and tripping more than once. Okay, you will get the odd stumble if you're on some uneven um, terrain, but uh, they're, 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 they're strung, you know, they're, they're stumbling or tripping on a regular basis more than once, you know, and repeated bilateral hind limb toe dragging. Okay, so if you have a look and your horse or the horse is dragging their hind limbs, um, that's a sign of pain and discomfort. 21, okay, the sudden change of direction against the rider's direction. So this is spooking. Okay, so once again, this comes down to, this can be a retraining issue as well. Um, you know, horses will spook if they're not really um, trained to respond to their light forward aid. So going forward from your leg aid. Um, if it becomes like, if, if you trained your horse to respond to light forward aids in all other situation, but they're still spooking or not wanting to go forward, um, you know, then you want to look at uh, whether it's um, a, one of these signs of being in discomfort or pain. And 22 goes sort of is a progression of this reluctant to move forward. Okay, so the horse has to be kicked and or verbal encouragement and stop spontaneously. Okay, so that's a sign of pain if your horse just doesn't want to go forward. And then we've got number 23, rearing both forelimbs off the ground um, and also bucking or pig rooting, um, which is kicking backwards, so both hind limbs off the ground. So once again, uh, this can be a retraining, um, a, a training issue. Okay, the horse hasn't been trained to respond to you going forward aid, so nice light responses of going forward. Um, or if, if, you know, it's not being resolved, um, uh, if, 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 sorry, a message came through. <laughs> um, if it's not being resolved uh, with, with training, then you wanna look at and make sure that uh, it is not uh, a sign of pain. So that is the 24 um, pain, the, the pain, the, the recognition of equine poor performance, the ridden horse pain ethogram. So there's the 24, uh, 24 behaviors that are 10 times, 10 times more likely to be seen in a horse that may be in discomfort or pain compared to a pain-free horse. So this has been quite um, a little bit of a longer um, live here because uh, I've gone through the 24 pain um, behaviors like that are observed in horses. So I hope you find this valuable um, and I'll put up a little note to say what I talked about in this live because, um, and I'll pop it in one of the um, guides as well. I'm gonna do, I want to let you know that um, at the top of the Facebook page, you will see a, um, um, along the bar at the top guides. Now that's where I have all different articles um, and, and content on equitation science and nutrition and things like that. So um, pop into the group and have a look under the guide session if you are wanting to find, um, yeah, just some, uh, I've got them under different headings. So I'm going to do a, um, I'll do a screen sharing and take you for a little tour through the Facebook group for anyone that doesn't know where things are. Anyway, have a wonderful day, um, wonderful Sunday if you're in Australia and 
um, a wonderful evening if you're on the other side of the world. And I will see you in the group and also for our next Sunday weekly live next Sunday. Okay, bye. I'm trying to work out how to get out of this life. I'm stuck, guys. <laughs> You've got me in the group. How crazy. So normally there's... I hope it's been um, recording all this time. Where is End Live? Hmm. Oh, this is really bizarre. I'm having a tech issue here. I hope it was. Oh, here we go. I've, I've got end live video. So I hope that. I hope I just did a live that was about 40 minutes long, and I would be really sad if it didn't um, record. So I hope um, that it was recording. If not, there's not much we can do about it. So um, I'll end this live video and um, I'll go back and see if it's there. Okay, bye.